Hi and welcome everyone to an EPC digitizing training today. I would like to show you how you can bore a hole, how you can use your boring device on your ZSK machine. So first of all you have to know that instead of needle 3 you have now here a boring device. So here I already prepared some blossoms for a flower and in the center here I want a hole. So here in the design head you can see I already used number 1 and number 5 for the blossoms and on needle 3 you have the boring device. That's where in the center later I'm going to bore a hole. The fixing of the hole will happen with needle number 2 and needle number 4. If you want, if two colors are not enough and you want a more multicolored hole design, you have to switch to needle number 1 and needle number 5. Imagine the thread staying in the fabric and you now move from needle 7 to the boring device, the thread will become super long and you have no chance to later hide it back in the fabric when it's getting back to the, to the needle to fix your hole. So always stay maximum 1 and 5, rather do 2 and 4. I now go here into the digitizer or press F8 and I just finished here with my last blossom. I now change to my needle next to the boring hole and I want to use needle number 2. First step is always to make a step line around the hole which will later be the hole to stabilize the fabric in that area so you really need tension that the borer has, has something to cut against. Also if you frame in the fabric too loose the fibers or the threads of the fabric will rather be pushed away instead of being actually trimmed so you will not have a clean board hole. Another thing now is, imagine on the machine, I've now changed to needle number two. Needle number two is on the right hand side of the boring device so I also want to locate my stitch on the right hand side to the hole. So needle number two make it on five o'clock, needle number four make the stitch on seven o'clock. Now first make some small fixing stitches, some back tacking. I now choose my running stitch program with F11. I use here program 20, comfort line. And I select this green drawn line here. That's my last stitch. Control and left mouse button, enter. Now I have to move the start point. It's now located here. It's depending on how you've drawn the circle. I want to now move also the start and the end of my circle here close to my stitch otherwise it would walk all the way around and then from here starts to fill the circle. So always make, if you have a, a closed shape, always make the start and end also where your stitches are. And you have the running stitch. Now you go back into the parameters. I went back with delete or backspace. If I now press F8 I can see per my parameters. I need two ways around so I want to do twice the circle. Now the step length these values you can you have to find out depending on the material. If you have some really open batiste or, or tall fabric, don't make them too short, make them nice and open. I now try with like two millimeters. Okay. Enter for recalculation and you get back into menu punching. Now already keep in mind in which direction the running stitch went. This direction has to be kept throughout all the other programs which will follow. So we will make two more satin stitches and they both have to run in the same direction. So I go into F6, my editor, click here on my stitches, I pick this menu stitch here, go with my arrow keys and see, okay, so it's going anti-clockwise. Go back into punching. Now I make some very small stitches here. Yeah, make them quite short so that there is no danger that the thread is being pulled out out of the fabric now when it moves over to the boring device. So the last stitch just make it towards the outside of your shape and you press F12 and say you want the boring device number 42. Now you see here there's this rectangle diamond shape around my cursor and I start in the center first stitch manually. Now imagine the boring device on your machine. We want a cutting line and then we want the borer to jump back to the center and then cut again from the inside to the outside, jump back from inside to right, jump back from inside to left. Depending on your hole we can make a few more cutting lines but always go from the inside to the outside and jump back to the center. Therefore I can also use another program 20. So I now 
pick my last program, you can see in the object pre-selection, I press simply enter and I'm back in my program. Select my cutting line. I want F8 to have one running with a very small stitch length. Imagine I want a lot of cutting holes. Also play with this parameter if you want less boring holes. Okay. No, I want a new parameter set. Okay. Enter. And it's automatically here in the end. Now I just jump back by a manual click. And I do the same with the other ones. If the hole is really big and you want to further destroy your, your fabric, yeah, or if the fabric is too heavy, you can also set single board holes. It's no problem. So if you place them here, imagine the fabric will be destroyed at its fold. Okay, now we go back to the center. Switch of the boring device with F12. Now imagine the thread of the needle with needle number two is carried all the way around because it's still stuck here in this piece of fabric. So I want to set one stitch here that all this extra thread which was pulled out is now back into tension. Also one important uh, fact here, if you consider the material, yeah, if you have a woven fabric, a man's shirt fabric is actually the best for boring. You have to go vertically into the fabric, yeah, so that you direct cut the threads of the of the material and don't just push it away. That's the best way to cut. Also here you have a few more shapes, so we now do a round bore hole, but you could also do rectangular ones or here this form like a pear or like a teardrop. There you have to try around with the different lines to really um, destroy, let's say, the fabric where you want the hole. Okay, so we switched off the boring device and set the first stitch here. And now we want to pull in the fabric here from all sides. Okay, so we come inside and grab fold the fabric literally around. Therefore, I go out of my material. So we first of all now do a very open set and stitch from this corner here. You see this one to this one. Okay. So go very far towards the center of your borehole. F11, I pick my program number one. And with F5, I can say I can define first outer contour and a second one. So I select now from here where my last stitch was. First circle, enter. And I also want to move my start and end here. And now the second one, I use the center here. Also move the start, the start point here. Okay, we'll automatically close here where you selected it. Now stitch directions. Make them really 90 degrees to the outer contour so that the fabric is nicely pulled out. Okay, enter. What we really don't want are these shortened stitches here. So I go back into my parameters, so back in my object, backspace, F8. No stitch shortening. Now they're all in the hole. And now make it rather open. So F7 for my density, I make this let's say 15. So only a few stitches to really drag the fabric outside. Also play around with this parameter. The heavier the fabric, the more stitches obviously you need to pull back your fabric. Enter. Okay. Now we have to check the direction. So I press F6. Pick one of my stitches, this one here, and see. Okay, this is now going clockwise, so I need to swap it. Therefore, I can select my outer contour. I press F6, enter, enter again, and now it's going in the right direction. Perfect. So I can leave my editor and go back into menu punching. Now I need another set and stitch to make a clean edge. Now this is now depending on the material. If you have very heavy material, again, you want clean edges. If you have very light material, like some some tall fabric or some batiste, don't make too many stitches because that will rather destroy your entire fabric. Yeah. Also, if the first setting here was too much, you can also set a few manual stitches. 
Yeah, only a bunch of stitches to fold the fabric away. But we're gonna run this one here now on on a yeah like a man's shirt material, and that's why we make another satin on top. Also consider here the direction, and my needle is still here. Okay, I use program one again. Enter. First selection. Now I pick my drawing line. You can use the same line, so they can be in the same place. Okay, here's my beginning and end. Enter. And my second contour. I now go a bit outside of the hole, yeah? So now make it a bit bigger. Don't make it here all the way in. I pick this distance now. Enter. And my start point. Okay, now I enter the stitch directions. These ones here we set all in 90 degrees to the outer contour, right? Now we set them slightly shifted, yeah? So always forward in the running direction. Also my stitch direction will be forward. Enter. I always play around a bit with the stitch directions. Yeah, okay. So this is the beginning and the end. You see this here with the arrow. Move this slightly further and then this one will be adjusted. Now, of course, F7, much more dense. Make it like a normal satin stitch. I make it now around 3.6. And it looks already better. Still now stitch shortening all the same length. And can check the running direction. F6. Pick one of the stitches. And do test run around. It's again the wrong direction. So F10 to get inside here. Select the outline. F6 to change the running direction. Enter. And it's now also running in the same direction. Now your design should look somewhat like this. So we have here some boring device, some manual boring stitches around. Here's my first satin to drag the fabric away. And then here we have our more dense one. Now do normal fixing stitches. Trimming. And that's it. Back to the main menu. And let's have a look on the machine. Save your design. Where? It's on my server. OK. And it's saved. Close the design. Go into your design management. Pick the design. Say export. That is KTC. And where you want to store it. Click on the three dots if your storage place is not available yet. I put this on my desktop. OK. And export. I can also give this one a name if I activate data mine file name during export. Export. Boring. Okay. Okay. Now put this one on a stick and load it onto the machine. So this was my short introduction on how to make a boring design. I hope you find any useful information. If you have any further questions, please let me know. I'm Britta Sanders from ZSK. Thank you for watching. I see you on the next show. Bye bye. <laughs>